Now, there's certainly no shortage of uh, Node MCU uh, ESP8266 development modules, but I came across a new one that I quite like because it's so small and it leaves more space on my tiny breadboards that I prefer. I know there's bigger breadboards, but I, I still like using the smaller ones. I, uh, all you've got to do is solder on the, um, uh, the binding posts here, the pins, and I'll show you how I've done it and also show you how I fit more of a project on the tiny board than before, um, because I, I used these uh, bigger ones that sort of used up half the space of my breadboard. So come on, let's go to the workbench and I'll show you how it's done. I will link to the source where I bought that down in the comments and possibly also in a blog article that I'm going to write. Now this looks a lot like a ESP12F module. We can see that here from the antenna. And all the circuitry for the USB stuff is underneath. Flash and reset buttons. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be anything worth noting on the on the bottom side. So I'll I'll put the the contacts on the on the downside the the headers. And I'll show you a quick project to see how, how small it is really on, on one of those breadboards. Uh, this is going to be a, a little Wi-Fi dictionary attack project that I uh, have not quite finished yet. So there's not, not much to show yet, but it, it exploits some known weaknesses. So what I really do is I connect the I2C uh, OLED display here to the pins D5 and D6, and I put in two pull-up resistors to uh, D1 and D2 because I will use them as buttons to choose from a menu. And well, that's that's basically it already. So let's power it up. I've loaded it with Node MCU, and it's got uh, two scripts on it. Uh, it's looking for Wi-Fi access points now. Uh, it's gonna list them and. Uh, you can now choose them by, well, actually pressing buttons, but here it's just uh, tapping the, the resistors. And that causes interrupts that um, allow me to, to change the display. And if I choose one, it's going to run the attack against this Wi-Fi access point. Now I, I included some, some well-known attacks, like the TP-Link, which uses a part of the BSSID as a password, or in this case, it's just um, the eight ones. So we're going to be in right now. And the, I haven't made that up. It's it's the default password of a Hutu uh, router. Okay, yes. So uh, have fun with that and keep making stuff. Bye now.